Uh, one of the things we do here on the program is to remind everyone to keep one permanent eye on the economy. Despite the noise on the political streets, never forget economy and the markets. Because at the end of it all, after the pools and everything and the winners and the losers, we all go back to the same market. Don't we? Yes, we do. So that's what our commodities market update is all about. In case you don't watch, oil prices uh, is still been uh, tanking a little. Well, then you have the LNG also. Liquefied natural gas prices also tanking a bit. Then the FAC uh, location, which was shared for, for the month of December, was also down a whopping 20%. Uh, in case you missed that in the news, because your guys are all hot about your candidates and who gets what. And don't forget suspension, removal, corruption, whatever it is. Uh, you need to watch what is going on. Then the minimum wage is still there. Now the state government will have it very, uh, very difficult to implement the new minimum wage. So after the, all the political noise, you come back to my market. And that is where Adimo Kwesa, a member of the economic think tank at FDC, uh, is coming from this morning. It's good to have you. Good to be here. Uh, it's good not to get carried away with the political noise. Of course, of course. Because these are real economic issues, isn't it? Okay, bring them on. Let, let, let's do that. I just try to paraphrase what you folks are putting here um, uh, for our viewers. Yes, this morning Brent is up about 1% to $60.52 per barrel. That is a lot on the back of yesterday's announcement that the U.S. would impose sanctions on Venezuela's oil sector. <coughs> the U.S. is Venezuela's biggest customer for oil, and oil is Venezuela's largest export. So this would deal a massive blow to Venezuela's oil industry. Well, as a country that is already on its knees. Exactly. Okay. Let's see how much, how is, much more. That is why it's extremely important not to impose to impose the sanctions in a way that it wouldn't hurt the people of Venezuela because all the oil sector is the only productive sector in, in Venezuela. So. You, you, don't need to, you don't want to know the, the exchange rate and inflation in Venezuela right now. <laughs> it runs into thousands of percent. Ten million percent forecast this year. So I'm telling that you. Is, so it's very, very difficult time. It's getting as Venezuela. worse as Zimbabwe. Yes, indeed. So, but on the back of that, there's still that underlying concern that of weakening global growth and therefore weakening global oil demand. Much of the demand outlook for 2019 is hinged on the performance of the Chinese economy. The Chinese economy expanded by 6.6% .6 in 2018, the slowest pace in over 10 years. And all points indicate, all signs indicate that it's a slow further this year. Retail sales are down, car sales are down. And if we recall last year, in the Fourth quarter of 2018, multinationals, notably Apple and Samsung, all issued profit warnings, citing slowdowns in consumer spending in emerging markets, China. particularly China. Mm. So that is why this round of trade talks, if I pivot to the last point on our list, that's why these trade talks later this week are very, very important. Mm. Steve Manonchin has been, uh, been saying, well, it looked look like there could have been an agreement. But if you look at the earnings coming through on Wall Street from Caterpillar and a number of companies doing sales in, in uh, manufacturers uh, are complaining about the slowdown in, in, the, in the Chinese market. And that is a very, it looks like an abattress for President Trump uh, uh, right, right now. I think it's a major issue. But, but let's come back home to one very big issue as far as the FAC allocations and what is the uh, corollary or the connection with the new minimum wage here. Yes, FAC, FAC dropped about 20%, like you said earlier, to 649 0.2 billion naira. That is an eight month low. The reason why FAC dropped that sharply was largely due to lower oil sales. We had a lot of shortens, a lot of force measures during that period, and that affected our oil sales, although the oil price was, was higher during that period, but the fall in production impacted uh, the, led to the drop in FAC. Now, the, the effect of this is that it would just make it more difficult for state governments to to implement this new minimum wage, whether it's going to be 27,000 or 30,000 naira, it is going to be extremely difficult for these states to in implement this increase in minimum wage. You're already dealing with a large number of areas, large amount of, of wage areas. So and, it's and, a very, and, and unpaid patients. Exactly. So it's a very difficult, it just compounds the situation. But the hope is that these short things have, have been resolved. So in subsequent months, facts should increase increased by a sharp amount in, in, gen in February and March. Yeah, if, if FAC is so stable, then the state governments need to think of where they're going to get the, the minimum wage paid and, and the several months and years of pension liabilities, they're not remitting into 
workers to count. That's one big story there. But, but again, if as bad as those stories were, uh, let's uh, move a bit into the uh, commodities uh, uh, in focus that we're looking at, uh, uh, livestock feeds. Uh, again, uh, some folks we need to benefit from this conversation around uh, the animal husbandry uh, 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 sector. What's the big story? Animal feeds is big. We used to have some companies. I do have some companies in that business. Did Yes, the two main companies that produce livestock feed are Livestock Feeds and Premier Feeds, which is a subsidiary of, of flour mills in Nigeria. Livestock production is a multi-billion dollar industry. The main producers are China, U.S., obviously because those two countries have the highest number, of, the largest number of population, so they produce a, lot, a large amount of livestock, livestock feed. Another interesting fact I found out in my research was that there's a positive correlation between protein consumption and global competitiveness. Meaning because, this is taking me back to my biology, but if there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's the brain, the brain produces, doesn't produce amino acids, but it requires amino acids to, to repair and maintain brain cells. So... A bit of glucose? Yes. Yeah, yes. amino, you know, amino acids is a unit of protein. It's yes. the smallest unit of protein. So because it doesn't produce amino acid, it needs a lot of protein to, to kind of fuel brain, brain. cells. Yes, mm. so that's why protein is very, there's a strong link between protein and how intellectual or how, how cerebral you are. I've noticed that countries, countries, Scandinavian countries like Denmark, Sweden, and also the Asian tigers, which are competitive economies, they consume a lot of protein. Asian tigers like Malaysia, Singapore, South Korea, they, com they consume a lot of protein. So that is an interesting fact. Maybe we should recommend it. <laughs> now, I don't want to cause any upset here this morning. Let's just move on. I uh, had some, <laughs> some set of folks I think should recommend protein for if it, if it, if it improves the brain energy and, 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 um, and, and being sharp, isn't it? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. That's a conversation of the camera for another day. But again, if we look at uh, what we have in Nigeria, if we look at maize, sorghum, granite, soybean, and wheat, we, these are things we produce in Nigeria. Yes, yes, yes. Those are the main sources of, li small, of livestock feed. And what we also found out is that there are two trends in livestock feed production, mm. namely pelletization and, and marsh. Pelletization is more popular in the Nigerian market because it is the most cost-efficient way of, of, of feed production. Pelletization, in essence, is when you, when you mold or compress your livestock feed into the form of pellets, into the form of little, little droplets, little mm -hmm. drops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By doing that, you're, there's a more uptake of protein, more uptake of fiber, and it's cost-efficient. But there's a risk because it might be mixed with other elements like nails or screws which might be ultimately damaging to the to the livestock soon mm, so we have to be sure there's standard and uh, no unscrupulous fellows if we look at the financials if we just move on very quickly for the next uh, a minute or two about the financials if we look at uh, uh flammies of nigeria which is a major producer and livestock feed uh livestock feed of course is quoted on the stock exchange and uh, and flam is also quoted even though there's a subsidiary uh of, of that company that produces this and you just put that uh, on the screen what you look at their turnover and look at revenue increasing. Very inter interesting numbers you guys uh, put together. Here. Yes, we can see for livestock feed in particular, revenue increased consistently from 2013 to 2016. That is in line with the country's strong population growth and there was a strong demand for protein. So during that period, there's a, there's a significant surge in production and revenue. However, in 2017, in line with most other companies in that sector, revenue dropped due to higher distribution and administrative expenses. So, but in 2018, Profits similar to like what flour mills in Nigeria, flour mills reported a, a 4.07 cent spike in, in profits in four year 18. So we expect that 2018 will be a better year. Results will be released soon. So 2018 will be a better year for these livestock feed producers. And, but unfortunately, livestock production has, has lagged agricultural sector growth. Livestock production contracted by 1.5% in, 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 in Q, Q3. That is in line with this conflict in the middle belts where farmers' livestock have been displaced. So that is really affecting, life, affecting the sub-sector. Interesting uh, scenario. I'm sure uh, a number of government policies are needed here uh, to turn things around for, for this. Uh, we can have more than these two big names. I'm sure quite a number of uh, folks are doing uh, the livestock feed production at the smaller and medium enterprises level. 
Mm. You will not see their signposts outside, yes. but, but, but they are doing some milling. Yes. Yes. Uh, and all that is feeding into the, the animal husbandry. Uh, but again, a very important issue you, not, you, you noted about the insecurity in the Middle Belt to the north, and all of that is coming back to just about a few seconds. So what's the big story around the global commodities market, wheat, rice, uh, sugar? Uh, how are we in relation to or in contrast to the oil and gas? Well, uh, uh, another one of Nigeria's main export products, Cocoa, cocoa is a bit softer, for softer this morning because of forecast of large, of robust production from West Africa. This is the, the main harvest season, the last till March, and they are forecast of a very strong production from the main producers, Ghana and Ivory Coast. That is what is keeping prices a bit softer this morning. But in terms of grains, Nigeria is a major importer of these grains. Prices are, are still soft, forecast of larger production from the U.S. in 2019, so that is... That is what is keeping wheat prices depressed this morning. Wheat and corn prices depressed. But that is good news for Nigeria because we import these products. So the lower they are, the, 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 the lower our imports bill. Mm. Mm. The better for us. Okay. Uh, thank you, Adim. Let's uh, hang it in there for today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate what you and the rest of your team, Economic Think Tank at Financial Derivatives Company, uh, do for us on Tuesdays and Wednesdays here on the program. And of course, you take all that in your box. But again, we talk about whether, whatever you're producing, whether it's livestock feeds or whatever it is, you need standards. So this is uh, an exclusive with the Director General of the Standard Organization of Nigeria, Osita um, Abuloba, and this is what he told uh, business uh, correspondent and producer Temple Ashaju in a sit-down interview uh, at the DG's office about the milestones that the SON achieved in 2018 was done around certification as well as making sure that all agencies work together to achieve the best standards for products in Nigeria. Let's take a listen to this interview. SON basically was repositioned last year in 2018 by massive deployment of technology, innovations in technology, and human capital development. And as a team, as the SON family has done very well, we've done well in terms of capacity building, awareness, creation, making people know, letting people know what we do giving people a voice in the fight against substandard uh, products, engaging the stakeholders and sister agencies as a way of improving the life of Nigerians through standards. It's been okay. We have a lot of ups and downs. A lot of things came up. The labs came up. We were able to commission most of our labs. The ones that were accredited before, like the food lab, the electrical lab, uh, we've increased their scope of accreditation. And um, we moved the lab in SON, the labs in SON, from 16 to about 37. Most of them are within accreditation. We're also able to make a remarkable progress in terms of metrology, that is the science of measurement, where we have the National Meteorological Institute that is uh, built and designed to be a primary source of um, uh, a primary source of uh, measurement for Nigeria and West African sub-region. Because in terms of quality infrastructure, Nigeria is leading other African countries in terms of metrology and other um, uh, quality infrastructure components. The most important thing is sensitization, telling people what we do, what they stand to gain by abiding to standards. Uh, where with the coming on board of uh, the Sun Council, we were able to pass and approve um, a large number of um, standards. We had a total number of 339 standards approved by the Sun Council for use mainly in um, the agricultural sector. Most of them are targeted at improving the capacities of Nigerians that manufacture products for export to reduce the persistent incidence of uh, rejection of Nigerian products. So on our part, we've been able to sensitize the stakeholders, 
let them know what they stand to gain by abiding to standards that is by getting it right the first time the standards also touched on diverse areas uh, there was a landmark standard on uh, tobacco control we have some on um, lubricants petroleum products and uh, a whole lot then we have standards also on good governance human resources standards they were all approved last year anti-corruption standards anti-corruption and governance standard was a novel standard that was developed by nigerians and um, by extension extended to other african countries the emphasis is to assist the government in their fight against corruption it provides it provides a preventive measure how to prevent the occurrence of corruption or wholesome activity within um, a management system it could be is a is it's recommended for both private and government and um, a private uh, pri private and public sector use what's the latest about quality management system we know that recently you got ISO accreditation to be able to certify a lot of players in the Nigerian markets Towards the end of uh, 2018, we had a landmark accreditation of our management system. So we accredited to uh, ISO 17025. That is the body that accredits, that certify um, auditors for management system certifications. It was also another first of its kind. Before now, we're working based on the powers conferred on us by the Sun Act of 2014. But by, with this accreditation that came up, that we received towards the end of uh, last quarter, it now means that SON is now qualified or recognized all over the world to certify or audit um, organizations, both private and public sector, to the um, uh, various management system certifications. I think we have about four of them. We have one, the quality management system, two, the environmental management system, food and uh, safe, food safety management system, occupational health system, among other certifications. What it that means is that we are now fully accredited to audit uh, companies or organizations that need to be satisfied to most of these management systems to improve their performance and competitiveness. The unique advantage of this uh, accreditation, which is also first among uh, very few African countries, is that before now, people usually go or invite um, international bodies from the Europe to come and certify uh, their processes for competitiveness. So now you have to, you don't have to travel anymore. You meet SON, we'll look into your system, we'll certify them, thereby saving money, hard and foreign exchange to Nigerian companies. Last year you reached an understanding with the lubricants manufacturers as to the ability to reduce uh, substandard uh, lubricants in the system. Now for 2019, what are your uh, plans to ensure conformity, monitoring and enforcement among these players? There was an outcry sometime in 2018 on the incident inflow of substandard lubricants. The government virtually declared a state of emergency on that sector where machineries and uh, automobiles were failing. And uh, if we want to key into government's uh, desire to manufacture Nigeria out of resection, to prosper our industries through manufacturing and uh, effective transport system, we have to pay peculiar attention to lubricants because they are like the life wire of every, any machineries. The Director General of the Standard Organization of Nigeria, Osita Abuluma, in an exclusive interview with Temple Ashaju Channel's television.
uh, business correspondent and producer. Let's come back to you after the break. The Transparency International has released its 2018 cor uh, Corruption Perception Ranking. Where is Nigeria? It's breaking news and it's right here. In two